Why are pirates so good at the saxophone? Well, they practice their arpeggios. Don't leave. We've got some really good patterns and exercises in, in a free PDF, I promise. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace. And if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do consider subscribing and hit the like button to add an augmentation to the ninth scale degree. Now today we're talking about arpeggios, the what and how to practice them. I've got some free PDF exercises and also we're gonna address the pitfalls, the common errors I see when students are practicing arpeggios and then also talk about future application for arpeggios when we practice jazz. Also, let me know in the comments below what pedestrian patterns have you grown tired of when practicing arpeggios? What have you done to spice up your practice? And if you don't have any ideas, well, we'll give you plenty today. Now, an arpeggio is basically a deconstructed chord. Being a melodic instrument, we can't play chords being one note at a time other than multiphonics, but that's a, another discussion for another day that I don't want to have. But what we're doing is playing each chord tone by itself. Now, this is important for understanding harmony, for understanding the context of jazz chord changes, but also it's a fantastic vehicle practicing your arpeggios for technique and tone. The what we practice is important, but the how we practice arpeggios is even more important. So first things first, make sure you download the Fundamentals book. It's my book on everything saxophone related for fundamentals. It's free. Download it below and let's take a listen to the pattern that is the end game of what we're doing here. Just first off in the key of C. <laughs> Now, many of us in our beginning band classes learned arpeggios as simply the one, three, five, eight, or the octave. And that's a fine starting point. It's something we should all know. So if you're just starting your journey, doing the first, third, and fifth scale degrees is an excellent starting point. But like all arpeggios, what I want you to focus on at first is playing slow and slurred. Now, why slurred, you might ask? Well, the leaps, my darlings. Any inefficiency of technique, slurring will illuminate very quickly. And that's going to be important when we talk about pitfalls a little bit later. But slow and slurred to start with. Now, the pattern I'm outlining today and that's in the Fundamentals book adds a couple of tones to the arpeggio that I think are really important in modern classical and jazz music, the 7th and the ninth scale degree. So let's listen to the pattern one more time and hear how that 7th, the leading tone, goes up to the ninth and then surrounds the tonic. Listen one more time. <laughs> And as with all things technical that we practice, we want to practice breaking it down into beat groupings. So kind of a condensed, sped up time version of how I would practice this. Beat groupings of four, one E and a two, one E and a two. Always landing on the next beat grouping to make sure it all lines up. You should always be practicing with your metronome. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just showing you quickly how you would break down and practice these beat groupings. At home, slowly, gradually increasing the tempo with your metronome. Now let's address the pitfalls and some of the common errors I see students engaging in when practicing arpeggios. First off, the amazing flying fingers. Take a look. Mm -hmm. 
And for some reason, arpeggios, especially is when we start to devolve into finger flatulation, where we let loose with reckless abandon, fingers flying up much more motion than is necessary, highly inefficient. So the fix for this is simply noticing. You can do that by taking video of yourself or practicing in a mirror and just bringing your attention to it occasionally within your practice session. And sometimes just consideration can be curative. So think about it from time to time. It's a good idea to take video of yourself or look in the mirror when you're playing to see, is your finger motion efficient? And if you're a teacher, one little fun game you can play with the students is the pen is lava, where have them play the arpeggio and put the finger, oh, maybe an inch away from their fingers. And if they touch the pen, scream, it's lava, really loud. <laughs> oh, those little dummies. What were we talking about? Next big problem I see is finger coordination with the leaps. And using this C arpeggio here, a common problem we find is going from G to C, the coordination with the index and ring finger. You'll hear something like this. Now to fix this problem, we're going to use rhythmic hacking. I'm going to have an entire video on this. I didn't introduce or come up with this concept. I just gave it a cool name. So rhythmic hacking, first we do a doubly dotted short note pattern a la a French overture like this. and repeat back and forth those two rhythmic hacking exercises until you smoothed out the transition and you have your fingers coordinated. Generally, it's the ring finger that's lazy coming down and lifting late, in my experience. Now, arpeggios are also a great way to practice your front E and F fingerings. They're highly efficient fingerings, especially when doing leaps like arpeggios. So given that we're doing C major, the front E is an excellent finger to be practicing. So your front E, it sounds high E, but we're using the front F key. So think of this like fingering G and then hitting your front F key, and that's gonna create front E. Now, it may not speak immediately, so we can practice this by isolating that interval and slurring to it and from it again and again and reversing the motion. So aside from great workouts in tone and technique, arpeggios are also something we should be working on in the circle of fourths. Now this is a long conversation we'll have at another time, and that is a conversation we'll actually have, but you should know that as a jazz performer, we need to be able to move things around the circle of fourths for a number of reasons. So the circle of fourths, if you're unaware, is just like the circle of fifths, but like a mirror image. So if you only have a circle of fifths, you can read it through the mirror, but don't say Boots Randolph three times, or you'll have a yakety massacre. Or you can simply look at the circle of fifths and go in counterclockwise motion. Now, as luck would have it, a professional jazz saxophonist happened to wander in the studio. Tyler Anderson, he plays with me in the Sonnenots and a new instructor at the Saxophone Academy. Now, we were discussing how we practice arpeggios and we both agreed that being able to play major sevenths and major arpeggio with that seventh skill degree is something critical for jazz. And I said, we well, practice in the circle of fourths. Yeah, and I said, yeah, man. I said, well, can you do it right now? He said, yeah, man. I said, well, let's do it. I plopped him down to see if he could do it with no practice, no preparation, just pull out major sevenths in the circle of fourths. <laughs> And then I said, do it faster. And 
then I said faster. I suppose everyone has their breaking point. I'll find mine one day. But let me help you find yours, but before we get to that breaking point, maybe you want to start exploring the circle of fourths or the reverse circle of fifths. So maybe to start out, just play the roots going around the circle of fourths, counterclockwise on this little wheel. And then once you're comfortable playing just the roots, hearing that sound of the circle of fourths, then maybe just go to simple one, three, five arpeggio slowly. Don't hurt yourself, Johnny. <laughs> And then when you're ready, I really like the pattern one, three, five, three, then one of the next key area. It creates a beautiful little voice leading and sounds like this. I think I stole this from Jerry Coker, if memory serves. <laughs> And then you can have some fun in improvising using arpeggios and scales. Scales are like arpeggios with the extra bits, or arpeggios are like scales with missing bits. Which came first, the scale or the arpeggio? We'll never know. <laughs> Now, this is just a broad overview of things you could and maybe should be working on. You're going to have questions, so hit me up in the comments below and I'll make up an answer. By the way, we're getting on a Friday release schedule. Every week, every Friday, the Saxophone Academy is going to be bringing you new comments. So stay tuned for next week for Read Wars, and I'll see you then. Oh, but go practice. <laughs>